Invest currently offers some of the best performing ETFs the market has seen over the last five years. The five actively managed ETFs provided by ARK cover innovation, autonomous technology and robotics, next generation internet, genomics, and fintech. The premise of ARK funds is that innovative disruption is often not priced correctly because it can be hard to size the opportunity. Given their long-term approach, ARK funds are a formidable source of investment ideas. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Donish, and I'm in personal finance, investing, and real estate topics easy to understand and keep up with. The five active ETFs that I will cover in this video by ARK Invest are called ARK Innovation ETF, ARK Autonomous Technology and Robotics ETF, ARK Next Generation ETF, ARK Genomic Revolution ETF, and finally, ARK Fintech Innovation ETF. The premise behind these ETFs was to identify companies that are often overlooked by traditional sector-based strategies. Innovation itself is not a sector, but Catherine Wood, CIO and founder at ARK Invest, wanted to build portfolios that are focused on disruptive innovation. She has also been one of the most vocal Tesla bulls out there in recent past. Back in 2019, when Tesla's shares were trading below $200, she was giving TV interviews explaining why Tesla shares are going to hit $4,000 or possibly even higher. All right, joining us right now is Tesla Uber bull, Kathy Wood, the founder and CEO of ARK Invest. Kathy, it's great to see you. Thank you, Becky. Happy to be here. Tesla is the top holding in several of ARK's funds. Yes. That continues to be the case? It does indeed. ARK's funds have been specifically focused on companies that are pushing the boundaries in their respective fields and that have a ton of potential. This selection process has an important impact on time horizon with holding periods of several years required in order to see bullish outperformance. Are they all going to be winners? No, but companies that do deliver on their principal will be driving a portfolio performance above and beyond that any one investor could dream of. Given the extended holding period of its positions, ARK funds can be a treasure trove of ideas and a great source to research disruptors of our time. Looking at the performance at the end of November 2020, ARK's ETFs have outperformed the market by a significant margin, delivering from 23 to 40% annualized returns since 2014. The ETF that was launched most recently in 2009 the FinTech Innovation ETF has shown close to a 60% annualized return since its launch date. Compare these ETFs to the S&P 500, which has delivered 12% annualized returns since 2014. Looking at the year-to-date column, which shows the 11 months of 2020, three out of the five ETFs have delivered returns over 100%, and the smallest return being 84%. These are some truly amazing return on investment figures. If you had invested 10K into any of these funds back in January of 2020, you would have either doubled your investment or would have been very close to doubling it by the end of 2020. ARK invests across sectors, geographies, market caps, seeking to identify those companies that have been missed by traditional sector-based strategies. If we focus on the drivers behind the performance of these ETFs, the length of the holding period is a very important factor. Several of the top holdings of ARK funds have gone nowhere in the initial few years before delivering mind-blowing performance in a matter of months. The goal here is not to time the market, but to capitalize on the technology adoption curve of innovation. ARK has identified four key phases in the rise of disruptive innovation. The first phase, long, flat adoption curves. During this phase, ARK seeks to identify the true market potential of innovative companies. In addition, during this phase, short-term price movements often reflect the stock's volatility more than its underlying value. The second phase, decline before market acceptance. ARK is attributing this phase to the market's tendencies to overestimate the impact of short-term events and to underestimate the long-term impact of disruption the goal for ARK here is to find companies 
that have what it takes to cross the chasm. Phase three, an ever expanding marketplace. Many truly innovative products and services are platforms in a winner takes most market. ARC looks for platforms of innovation that cuts across sectors for maximum potential upside. Phase four, continued evolution and differentiation. As companies realize the commercial success of their innovation, they must continue to evolve and differentiate. ARC monitors if a company is reinvesting into future opportunities and identifies potential disruptors. By looking for companies with maximum potential upside, ARC is building portfolios that may look odd to many investors. Both Wall Street and Main Street are narrowly focused on the performance of their portfolios over the next few days, weeks, or months. The problem with this approach is that it gives very little room to stocks that don't appear to outperform in the near future or have yet to show significant traction in their product adoption or stock price. Let's look into the funds more closely to see how ARC is backing these innovative companies, starting with the main fund, the ARC Innovation ETF. ARC defines disruptive innovation as the introduction of a technologically enabled new product or service that potentially changes how the world works. Companies within ARC Innovation include those that rely on or benefit from the development of new products or services technological improvements and advancements in scientific research relating to the areas of DNA technologies, industrial innovation in energy, automation and manufacturing technologies. Looking at the fund details, the ticker symbol is ARKK. This is an active equity ETF, which is different than a passive ETF, which will focus on a broad market, such as the S&P 500. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange. The fund initially launched back in October of 2014. The net assets under management as of December 31st, 2020 are over $13 billion. The management expense ratio is 75 basis points. As this fund trades, it can have anywhere between 35 to 55 holdings within the ETF, and it is professionally managed by Catherine Wood. When it comes to performance, this ETF has definitely delivered with a five-year annualized return of 41% a more recent three-year annualized return of 47%. And through 2020, the performance was over 157%. When looking at the graph, we can see that the performance was relatively flat in the early years. Halfway through 2017, it started to gain momentum. Throughout 2018 and 2019, it had bumps along the way, but the performance was relatively flat. And then from the March low of 2020, it really took off. The top 10 holdings include some very well-established names like Tesla, of course, Roku, Square, Zillow, Spotify, among others. Next ETF, the ARC Autonomous Technology and Robotics ETF. Companies with ARC Autonomous Technology and Robotics ETF are focused on and are expected to substantially benefit from the development of new products or services, technological improvements and advancements in scientific research related to energy, automation, and manufacturing, materials, and transportation. Examples include autonomous transportation, robotics and automation, 3D printing, energy storage, and space exploration. Looking into the fund details, the ticker symbol is ARKQ. This is an active equity ETF and trades on the CBOE exchange and was launched back in September of 2014. The net assets under management as of December 31st, 2020 are over $1 billion. The management expense ratio is 75 basis points. As this fund trades, it can have anywhere between 30 to 50 holdings within the ETF, managed by Catherine Wood. When it comes to performance, this ETF has also delivered with a five-year annualized performance of around 30%, a more recent three-year annualized return of 28%, and through 2020, the performance was over 107%. Similar to ARC, performance was relatively flat in the early years, and then it starts to take off early 2017, and between 2018 and 2019, had some bumps along the way, but was pretty flat. 2020, it starts to take off, dips in March, like everything else during that period, and then just explodes from there. 
the top 10 holdings include some very well-established names like Tesla, Alphabet, Deer & Co. The third ETF in the portfolio, ARK Next Generation Internet ETF. Companies within the ARK Next Generation Internet ETF are focused on and expected to benefit from the shifting base of technology infrastructure to the cloud, enabling mobile, new, and local services, such as companies that rely on or benefit from the increased use of shared technology, infrastructure and services, internet-based products and services, new payment methods, big data, the internet of things, and social disruption and media. More specifically, companies in this ETF focus on cloud computing and cybersecurity, e-commerce, big data and artificial intelligence, AI, mobile technology and the internet of things, social platforms, and finally, blockchain and P2P. Looking into the fund details, the ticker symbol is ARKW. This also trades on the New York Stock Exchange and was launched back in September of 2014. Under management as of December 31st, 2020, are well over $4 billion. The management expense ratio of this ETF is 79 basis points. And as this fund trades, it can have anywhere between 35 to 50 holdings within the ETF, and obviously managed by Catherine Wood. When it comes to performance, this ETF has delivered with a five-year annualized return of around 46%, a more recent three-year annualized return of 51%, and through 2020, the return was over 159%. If you had invested $25,000 into this ETF back on Gen 1 of 2020, your portfolio would be worth $65,000 by December 31st of 2020. Performance was flat from IPO to around the summer of 2016 when it started doing well until December of 2018 when it saw downward momentum. Shortly after, it starts to rise again until the market collapse of March 2020. Then like its fellow ARK ETF, takes off like a rocket to finish off 2020. The top 10 holdings include established names like Tesla, Roku, Square, Facebook, Snap, and Spotify. So far we've seen all of the ARK ETFs have Tesla as one of their top holdings. You can see why at the start of this video, I mentioned that Catherine Wood is very bullish when it comes to Tesla. So you shouldn't be surprised to see it as a top holding in all the ETFs we've seen so far. The fourth ETF, the ARK Genomic Revolution ETF. Companies within ARKG are focused on and are expected to substantially benefit from extending and enhancing the quality of human and other life by incorporating technological and scientific developments and advancements into genomics into their business. The companies held at ARKG may develop, produce, or enable targeted therapeutics, bioinformatics, molecular diagnostics, and stem cells. Looking into the fund details, the ticker symbol is ARKG. This is an active equity ETF and trades on the CBOE exchange. It was launched back in October 31st of 2014 and has net assets under management of over $4 billion as of December 31st, 2020. The management expense ratio is 75 basis points. And as the fund trades, it can have anywhere between 30 to 50 holdings within the ETF. And of course, managed by Catherine Wood. Looking at performance, this ETF has delivered an annualized return of 33%, a more recent three-year annualized return of 50%, and through 2020, the performance was over 188%. Performance was pretty flat from 2015 to 2016. It started picking up early in 2017 and kept increasing steadily with a few bumps until it really took off in March of 2020, just like the other ARK ETFs. The top 10 holdings include Pacific Biosciences, Teladoc Health, CRISPR Therapeutics. The last ETF in our coverage, the ARK, FinTech Innovation ETF. This fund uses a definition we've seen before. FinTech innovation can be described as the introduction of a technologically enabled new product or service that potentially changes the way the financial sector works, which ARC believes includes, but is not limited to, the following business forms, such as transaction innovations, blockchain technology, risk transformation, frictionless funding platforms, 
customer-facing platforms, and new intermediaries. Looking to the fund details, the ticker symbol is ARKF, trades on the New York Stock Exchange, and is an active equity ETF. This fund was launched back in February 4th of 2019, whereas the other funds were launched back in 2014. So it's a relatively new offering from ARK. Having said that, net assets under management as of December 31st, 2020, are over $1.2 billion. The management expense ratio is 75 basis points. As this fund trades, it can have anywhere between 35 to 55 holdings within the ETF and managed by Catherine Wood. As it's been less than two years since this ETF was first launched, it doesn't have a long track record of performance like the other ETFs we've seen so far. However, this fund still delivered in 2020 a performance return of over 107%. Since launch, it has seen steady growth until the market crash of March 2020. And then, as its ARC siblings took off right along with them. The top 10 holdings include well-known names such as Square, Zillow, PayPal, and Alibaba. You can see that these funds have shown great performance since launch. But I also want you to keep this in mind. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. To simply put it, if an ETF or any fund for that matter has performed crazy returns in the past year, past three years, or past five years, doesn't mean tomorrow is going to deliver those same returns. It could be very well that these ARC ETFs no longer outperform the market going forward because of the media coverage and immense popularity these funds have received. When looking at these active equity ETFs, if the risk reward ratio is not for you, then consider investing in passive index funds that track a broad market such as the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. I have links to promo codes in the description below, so make sure you go check them out as these are all products and services I use in my daily life. Do you have questions for me? Drop them in the comments below. And while you're at it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so I know to produce more content like this. That's it for now. I'll catch you guys in the next one.